Yo, yo, yo. Hey, thanks for tuning in to the Best Practices Show. I got a great episode today with two amazing men who are just, number one, you're going to see they're phenomenal people. Great dentists, great leaders, and have become great friends. And today we talk about one of the most important subjects in dentistry. If you're a dentist, you know this. Got to find a mentor. Got to find somebody I can you know, trust, somebody I can share stuff with, somebody that can help me grow. And today we talk about how that works in their lives. And so you'll see why these guys are so special to me. And uh, hopefully it gives you some perspective on what's important to all of us, which is the relationships in this great profession. So hope you enjoy the episode. We'll see you soon. Hey guys, welcome back to the Best Practices Show. My name is Kirk Barrett. I'm the host here. I don't know why, but like uh, you're going to meet two guys, crazy sharp today, and we're going to be talking about probably one of the most important things I've learned the hard way and keep learning over and over again. It's mentorship and dentistry or finding a mentor, preceptorships, a hero, somebody you can look up to, or at least somebody to help you find the way here uh, in dentistry. And we're just gonna jump into it and roll because that's how we roll. And so I got both Kevin Groth on and Zach Sisler. Now, we gotta start here first because I'm a big fan of both of yours, you know? And uh, I've gotten to know both of you over the years and watched what you guys have do, but have done. But uh, I got a lot of dental students listening. And you guys, if you're new here, we even have pre-dental students here, which I don't even know how that works. But like, it's so fun. I want you to know if you're showing up for the first time, here's what this show is all about. I want you to show up and just, my hope is we're helping you with something. And you walk away and your life or your practice is a little bit better. So keep showing up and you're going to see these two guys are going to be a big part of it. But who wants to go first? I want you guys to tell them who you are in case they've never heard you guys before. Who wants to go? Kevin, go first. After you. <laughs> <laughs> I knew that was going to happen. I was going to know. All right. Um, I respect my elders here. So there you, you go. go. All right, Zach, you got to go uh, first. Uh, here it is. Here all it right. is. Okay. Uh, all right. So again, my name is Zach Sisler. I uh, practice in a little town of uh, Shippensburg, Pennsylvania. Um, it's a tiny little farm town, maybe 6,000 people. And uh, when I first came to town, my goal was to do uh, like kind of cosmetic, restorative implant work. And um, being a small farm town, I was up against a lot of opposition. But over the course of the last nine years, we've been able to kind of transform this little practice into that vision and um, be able to have patients who travel in from a few hours away to uh, seek treatment. And um, so with that being said, I graduated from West Virginia, uh, originally from there, born and raised there came to Pennsylvania after I graduated to start working and um, my journey as far as kind of getting to where I've got, uh, I started out at the Dawson Academy where I learned a lot of the kind of techniques and how I treat patients and through the AACD, the American Academy of Cosmetic Dentistry, um, to how to take aesthetics to another level. So with that being said, um, my goal is kind of maybe a little bit similar to Kirk's in that um, whoever comes into our practice, we really want to be able to just help tweak things and make it just a little bit better each time they come in. Um, whether that's uh, from a dental standpoint or whether that's just building relationships with people. So um, along that journey, probably, I don't know when that was, Kevin, when we first met, um, but Kevin and I kind of linked up and uh, it's been a great friendship. It's been a great mentorship. It's been just uh, an incredible ride to share with him and also see him grow as a clinician as well. So yeah, 
That's me in a nutshell. I'll leave it up to Kevin. All right, wait, wait, wait. Hold on, because I want you both to say this. Like, you guys are real people. Like, you're not just dentists that are like, yeah, I just I work hard at dentistry. No, you have lives. You have, Zach, you have four kids. Okay, can you just shed a little light? Yes. Like, and the reason I say that is you. We we all run the balance of like the demanding professional life, and we also want a life too. So, share a little bit about you personally. So personally, uh, I have my wife who is a high school sweetheart and, uh, she's been with me all the way through high school, college and dental school. So she's got her honorary dental degree and, um, we have four, uh, beautiful kids. Ages are eight, six, four, and two. Um, they, we are very, very busy to say the least, but we are very much a, um, I am very much a real dad, husband, person. Uh, I don't uh, claim to be any kind of uh, high flute in society dentist or anything like that in the least. It's more when I leave the office, it's I become a professional taxi cab driver and I'm going to ballet practice and I'm going to basketball practice and I'm coaching basketball practice. So it's a um, balance for sure, I guess Mm -hmm. is what I would say. But um, knowing that the priorities outside of here for me are still family over the practice, uh, has kind of kept me grounded in a lot of ways and really influences the way that I do run my practice to be accommodating to those sorts of circumstances. So I love it. I love it. So I'm going to, I'm going to challenge you right away. You're a basketball coach to your kids. Let's try to beat my, I had a, I had a perfect season. I was Oh, and 16. So try to beat that, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> Longest five months of my life. Um, <laughs> it was awesome, though, I, I, I think. So <laughs> good stuff, buddy. All right, Kevin, who are you? Uh, Kevin Groth, restorative general dentist in Detroit, Michigan area. Born and raised in Michigan, haven't left the state. And I question that every single winter because <laughs> I just can't stand the snow and the cold. And my daughter wanted me to wash the cars yesterday. I said, the, froze, the, the the hose is frozen. You can't do this. Well, let's get some buckets and go outside. I'm like, I, oh, this winter is great. But it's something that I just enjoy being here. I have a great practice. I have a great team. I have a great group of people that surround myself on a daily basis to support me. And I treasure and value that every single day. So great wife, one daughter. I don't know how you guys do four kids because I can barely do one. So one on the way in May. So it'll be awesome. two for me. And just really kind of figuring this thing out one day at a time and learning the lessons that come that way. Um, I don't know why I keep coming on this podcast because I'm just still just learning and I'm just a constant grower and, and sharing my experience. And hopefully that resonates with people because I'm human. I make mistakes. I learn. I surround myself with people like yourself, Kirk and, and Zach, who push me and support me and every capacity of life and in dentistry. And I think this is kind of a cool moment for me because I'm looking at the two people that have probably been the most influential outside my wife and my team for the last two years in my life. So both of you, I'm very grateful for your presence. I'm grateful for your mentorship and support because I mean, Zach, we talk all the time, Kirk, we have a scheduled time every week and it's just something just to be able to pick your brains and and lean on you when times are tough or celebrate the good times I know there's nothing better than that. So yeah. that's kind of a cool moment for me. Yeah, it's pretty cool. So I'm excited. You know, this is one of the most important topics. I love chatting about this all the time. And it's the whole idea of mentorship. Now I could be facetious and say, gosh, you guys just woke up. You started your practice and you're killing it from day one because you took some course. But that's not the truth of it. Let's talk about the why before the how. Why is this concept so important? And what does it mean to, to either one of you? I think with mentorship, I, I, I don't believe in the concept of an ego because everything that I've become or everything I've done is because people have taken an influence or taken an energy towards me that I've put into my life or practice. So nothing about me is just talent based or original by nature. And I think it's important to recognize the people that have had an effect on my life and my practice and what I do. And uh, it's, it's something that if you don't have a mentor in dentistry, it's very isolating. It's alone. You're going to crack at some point. So everybody who's listening to this should know that there's an important role that you need to serve as a mentee and a mentor out there for other people, because one, you can learn it and put it into practice, but it's also important to then share it and pass it along too. So 
I don't know. I'm a big fan of mentorship for that reason. So yeah, that's what I'm love all about. It. Love it. Zach, what's been your journey? So I feel like, uh, I agree with Kevin on this sentiment of the ego component. Um, because I feel like with mentors, it's not necessarily a one way street. You know, it's not necessarily like the mentor is just teaching a mentee. It's a, you're growing together as you're going through this. And I've had the experience of some really great mentors in my career. And I've had some experiences looking back where the mentors maybe weren't as great. Um, and now that honestly, Kevin and I've been talking for two years now and the mentorship that we've had with one another, that to me was the first, if well, not the first, but one of the first few that um, I really felt this genuine humble connection of like, man, he's really adding a lot of value to my life. He's pushing me to do new things. I'm helping him by looking at things and helping him just being by a sound, a listening board or a sounding board. Um, and I felt like I was kind of humbled or it was like an aha moment for me. Cause I was like, wow, this is really what this can be. This can be something really special. And as a general dentist, a lot of times it can be a little bit isolating. Yeah. I mean, you know, you're in your practice, you're doing the daily grind. And at times you're just like, man, I just need like a boost of confidence. And then, then I look at the calendar and it's a Wednesday at three 30. And I know that I've got to call with Kevin. So I know I'm going to get that boost. And so yeah. to me, that's, that's what I would encourage anybody who is looking for a mentor. One, you have to be kind of forthright with it. You have to say, Hey, are you willing to set up a talk and like, like, uh, and go through this with me. But with Kevin, I mean, it just clicked and it yeah. just worked out really, really well. And so I've been very humbled by it to at this stage of the game, be like so encouraged from him. Yeah. So, well, well let me go right there. So if you're a young dentist listening, going, you know, that re really easy for you guys to say, but like nobody, it's not easy to find a mentor. You know what I mean? Like, um, it's not like I just, you know, I meet a, somebody at a course and they're like, yeah, let me mentor you. That'll be great. So, um, and that's a real question. I get that one all the time. Like, it's not easy to find a mentor. What do you say to that? It's never been say, easier. Yeah. Well, and I would say too, that it's not, I used to always think initially, like in that question that you're asking Kirk, like, I got to find this guy who's going to be with me for the rest of my life. Right. Like he's going to just like, we're going to grow together. And I'm like, there's very much a season of your life that where mentors maybe come and go. Like I had right. a great mentor when I was in dental school and he helped me a lot and he, he helped grow me and, and really encouraged me to get out. And then as I moved on and transitioned into other things that, that faded a little bit and that's okay. It's okay right. to realize that in that current season of life, there are still people around me that I can find and connect with right. and know that it's not necessarily forever, but it doesn't mean that I throw the baby out with the bathwater. I mean, like I'm still garnering some sort of um, uh, engagement, some sort of learning aspect with this person right now at this current season. Yeah, I love it. I love it. And Kevin, you That's said it's never been true. easier. What do you mean by that? <clears throat> well, yeah, I mean, mentors come and go. I can't speak more highly about what Zach just said because there are people that have had an influence on me that had a huge, huge effect on me. And then it just, it's a wave and it just, I still friends with people, but they're, and I appreciate them wholly. To what they are but at the same point um it's just that come and go but i i was gonna say it mentors mentorship has never been easier to find somebody like zach and i spent two years before we actually met in person mm -hmm. and like huge huge influence on me so it's something that i reached out on social media he's an exceptional dentist i mean you look at his cases and the, what he's doing is just remarkable and i just kept engaging with him and ultimately just the messages back and forth led to I mean, he walked me through a case when his his recent kid was born at the hospital. He was sitting in the hospital bed talking to me through a case, you know, and that was one of those things that I knew that his intention within me was to develop me as a dentist, but also as a person. And, and I'd go to him for father advice. I go to him for marital advice. I go to him for every case I sent him, good or bad. You know, this didn't happen as much as I wanted to, but he can see the progression for what it comes to. But ultimately, yeah. like when you are looking for a mentor, the importance is just to, to be vulnerable too. Because I think oftentimes you want to go to these people that you've you want to aspire to grab to them and gravitate towards them. But I think it's easy to say, like, look at how much I know. Right. Look at what I do. Look at what I am. 
And it's almost the opposite of that. Because if you could say, I don't know anything, like yeah. teach me, I'm a sponge. I'll do whatever you want me to do. Just show me the ropes and I'll, I'll do it. And when you can actually learn that way and then you implement it into your life and you can see it, it engages the mentor because then they're saying, wow, this person's actually taking my advice and putting it to practice. Totally. And that's so, so important as someone looking for a mentor is to one, engage with them and then also implement it. Yeah. I'm going to totally piggyback on that one. Cause that's a, an important component. Now you guys had a little, you know, I, we could always talk about everybody's journey, but like 25 years of doing this, I thought about quitting 12 times in the first half of it. Like just, I'm, <laughs> I can't do this. This is too hard. I mean, there were some dark moments where my wife was like, you got to keep going, you know? And then, um, it, and once you start to catch a rhythm in whatever you're doing, you get around certain people, things, whatever happens. And my journey was this, like I had heard about the Cranham guy and I was tired of hearing about the Cranham guy. And then I'm just like, I just started stalking him. And so, you know, I've told this story before, but like he was speaking in Traverse City and I emailed him like multiple times. And I'm like, hey, we're coming up to see you. And he's like, okay, great. You know, and got there early. I was the first person there. He's like, okay, this is weird. And then I told him we were going to be friends. And he was like, I'll be the judge of that. You know, and so um, at lunchtime, we actually sat together. And then I'll tell you guys, if you're listening, this is what I did. I took notes the whole time. I wrote down exactly what he said. And then I typed him up and I emailed him for one reason. I want him to know I'm not messing around here. I'm not some guy who's just trying to glean some experience from you and apply it in my own life. I'm a serious player here. You know, and he's like, wow, you actually wrote down what I said. And I'm like, yes. And, you know, there was a lot of grammatical errors. But the fact was, is like I wanted him to know, like, I'm serious about this. And so I think the opportunity exists, but you got to go out there and get it. A lot of times dentists sit in the middle of a field, put their pail down and they expect the, the cow to back up over the pail. You know, you got to go get it. You got to go find out what you're looking for. Would you guys agree? Yeah. Yeah. I would. No doubt. And I'd say don't be I'd, I'd say don't be bashful about it. Like I'm happy to talk to anybody who would want to reach out to me. Yeah. And I might say the same thing. I'll be the judge of that if we're going to be friends. <laughs> yeah. But but I I I would encourage the humility to actually just go and ask somebody, "Hey, look, I'm for just sure. looking for somebody for help." You yeah. Know, like can is there something you could look over for me? Absolutely. Yeah. Happy, happy to help. Absolutely. I think that's the beauty of dentists. Most people are good people, right? And in the community that we're in, and they want to give back to those that are looking for help because at some point in their career, they also struggled and they were looking for guidance and support too. So I think just the pay it forward mentality is something that's so important. And, and I don't think you see that in a lot of other professions like dentistry does. Right. So to me, it's, it's find someone that's exceptional in what they do and inspire. They, they inspire you to be better and then look for them and seek them out and go, do whatever you can to get on their on their level to learn. Yeah. And then like I think I have to pat myself on the back here, but at the same point, like I go above and beyond to acknowledge and appreciate them for them giving me the time and the the wisdom. You know, I can't tell you times I've been out to dinners with people and I I, I buy the tab or I, I send a bottle of wine to somebody or mm -hmm. I send some cookies to both of you. You know, like it, it's ultimately something that like I just don't appreciate when people give their time and energy towards me, because I know that it's, it takes a lot to slow it down and pause from your daily grind to give to somebody else. Yeah. And if it doesn't get appreciated, it's almost like mm, I might second guess that next time. Yeah, absolutely. I want to go back to the vulnerability part too, because our journeys have been affected by this one great man whose name is Dr. Peter Doss. I met him at age 24 and I'll never forget this. Like I remember going to this, con this conference and I was like, I, he was 64, I was 24. I'm like, I'm not going to listen to some 64-year-old dentist talk for three days. I mean, what is it? And you realize, you know, in your 20s, you have it all figured out. No one can tell you anything. And I really enjoyed it. I mean, he sounded a little bit like my father. And I remember asking him at the end of the first time I had ever met him, Dr. Dawson, what's the one thing you would say to me? I just got in dentistry. He's like, oh, that's a good question. I would never tell myself I have it all figured out. You know, um, stay curious because the dentists that you meet that have it all figured out, number one, Kirk, they're not that much fun to hang around with. And number two, I'm always learning <laughs> from my younger dentist. They teach me so many things. And I wrote him a note. And you guys know the end of this story. I wrote him a little letter at the end when I got home. Guess what he did? Wrote he wrote back. me back. I still have it. It's in plastic. It's in my <laughs> office. I will save that thing forever. And you guys probably have the same thing. I was going to say, I have, I have them in my desk drawer. I was yeah. 
but it's so. but I remember opening it up and like a handwritten note from the guy. And then there was now that I was a little enamored because he was 400 dentists in the room. But like and then I it was like the first time I'd ever met somebody that was humble in that position. Oh, I forgot to tell you guys this, too. So I had introduced myself at the beginning of the course. And this, this is not about me in the podcast, but I want you guys to know they're listening like this is how it works. I introduced myself at the beginning of the top 10 court. Hi, Dr. Dawson. My name is Kirk Perry. And he goes, where are you from? It was in Boston. I go, I flew here from Phoenix. He's like, what? And I said, and I just kept asking him questions. Well, at the break, he goes, do you want to sit at my table? I was like, whoa, whoa, for lunch. Now, I thought I was going to be learning from one of the greatest experts of all time. Like he was going to share some in intimate secrets. And you know what he did? He asked everyone questions like, where are you from? And one guy was right next to him from Memphis. And he's like, oh, you're from Memphis. There's a barbecue place. And they knew exactly what it was. And I left the lunch at 24 going, that was the dumbest lunch I've ever. Like I sat with the guy who was running the conference and I thought he was going to share some secrets. Well, what I know today was he was sharing the secrets. I just wasn't there to listen to the secrets. We talked about food, barbecue, and kids. That's what we talked about. The whole time. We didn't talk about an airplane, a second home, how amazing his dentistry was. I don't even think he said the word dentistry the whole time. You know what I mean? So there's there's these little moments that go, oh my gosh, this is bigger than me here. And um, I don't even know where I'm going with that. But like along the lines, it's like recognizing the opportunity for what it is. Mm -hmm. It broke the mold with him. Yeah. You know, it's still something, it's still, I guess, still one of those... I always just felt like it was always so genuine yep. with him. Like there was, there wasn't the air, there wasn't any, it was just, it was truly him getting to know you yep. and shared many a cab rides, shared many, uh, uh, lunches with him. And he just had this way to captivate you and yeah. make you feel like you're the only guy in the room and still, still miss him amazed by the, all of that, that I even had the opportunity to be around him. But, yeah. So everybody's got their Pete story. Absolutely. So. Absolutely. And so I have one more. I just, I love talking to you guys. And like, I spoke only one time in my life at the American Academy Restorative Dentistry. And I almost wet my, actually I did wet myself. I was so nervous and I did a whole graph and it was from uh, younger next year and talking about how it related to dentistry. And at the end of the graph at around 85, it goes like this. So after the lecture, I walk out, he was waiting for me. Kirk, and he gives me a big hug. He goes, great lecture. Just don't like your graph. <laughs> and I was like, <laughs> oh, he was a straight shooter. And just, uh, it was really fun to get those things tongue in cheek. But I've also learned along the journey, like there's a certain point, and this is why I love talking to both of you guys. You guys now teach me more than anything. And so there's a certain point where the relationship switches and that's got to be my favorite part. And it was a Simon Sinek quote that you texted me over a weekend and I'm like, dude, this is my jam. And so, the, you know, just talking to you guys, I have like, I have like 50 questions I want to ask you in the next hour. But like learning from you guys is like one of my favorite pieces. And you guys get this talking to younger students. Yeah, there's no doubt. I mean, at some point in time, it flips to a friendship and then it flips to both learning from different aspects of life. And I like when the mentorship role goes to that level because then it becomes something more like a deeper, meaningful life perspective, right? I mean, I've had to lean on both of you a lot the last couple of months. And ultimately, like, that's, that's something that I, I don't want to get out here, and make it seem like we all have our act together, right? I mean, right. it's been one of the hardest stretches in my life that I can remember. And like, Kirk, we talk about the the, the pillars of life, right? And, the, and what I've realized is that every single pillar is connected to some degree. So if one facet isn't great, then the next one isn't great, and the next one isn't great. And and at some point in time, you have to lean on people like yourself and Zach and just say, hey, you know, what is going on here and what can I do? And and it's so refreshing and helpful to hear people say, like, been there, yeah, done that. It's OK. Like, things will be all right. And just kind of navigate this with you, because if again, if you're alone in life and you don't have people to lean on, like, what's the point? Yeah. And you're just going to struggle. It's going to be depressing, depressing and and ultimately, like, it's energizing to know, like, okay, the people that I look to, the people I trust the most and I'm vulnerable with and, and, and comfortable with going to life moments are expressing to me, like, lean on me. We got you. We're going to do this. And everything's going to be better. You know, that case you're doing didn't really work all that, all that well. 
right. but the next one will be better. Or that situation that happened, you know, a month ago or whatever it is, it's going to improve. Just keep charging ahead because we've been there too. Yeah. Now and let me, that's let me, what I love about mentorship. Yeah. Let me ask you even more specifically, Kevin. Now you guys talk on Wednesdays. Okay. So what does mentorship look like? Do you have an agenda? Do you guys go through like a syllabus? Now I'm kind of leading you with a silly question, but like, give me a sense of what the, what does it even look like? Like, what do you guys talk about? I mean, I reached out to Zach about that and said, Hey, would you be opposed to an idea that like we talk frequently now with texting and, and messaging and reading our phone calls? Like, can we make this like a structured thing and do like a every two week ordeal? And I was glad that you said yes. Cause <laughs> I put a lot out there and, and I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm very grateful for that because no, there is no agenda. It's just kind of like, what'd you do today? what do you think about this? Or what's right. going on in your life right now? Or what's, how's the family? Oh my gosh, my daughter's not sleeping. Can you help me with this? Or oh, whatever it is. I mean, it's the best drive home because it just goes by so quickly. And then all of a sudden it's just like, dang, okay. I can't wait for the next two weeks to happen because I'm sure I'll pick up something and, and have a different reflection on life after that too. Yeah. Now I, I got to get into the specifics cause I'm having FOMO already. Like you guys are both driving home during this. Like is a set appointment? Zach, are you finishing too? Or is like, how does that work on your side of things? Yeah. I, I mean, Kevin and I have the same schedule because we heard this great guy one time and told us, you know, every schedule should be seven to three in a general office. So <clears throat> we start the call about 3.15. Um, and it's just, it's, it's just enough, you know, like mm -hmm. there's times where I get home and yeah, I'm sitting in the I'm sitting in the garage still talking on my phone and looking like a crazy person sitting in my car and my wife walks out and she's like, oh, he's on a call, okay. Mm -hmm. But there isn't an agenda because I feel like a lot of times in, in mentorships that I've had in the past where there is an agenda, it's not as genuine. It's right. not as humbling. Mm -hmm. It's not as vulnerable. Like yeah. they have an agenda that they're trying to achieve and it's like, well, I know, but I just needed help with this today. Like right. this, I just, I'm struggling with this and that's not, that's just not what they're focused on. Kevin and I, it's very fluid. I mean, it's very, Hey, how's it going? Sometimes I'm the one talking a lot because I got stuff to get off my chest and I need a sounding board. Other times he's talking a lot. Um, other times it's, uh, like encouraging stuff. And then other times, it's, you know, there's some hard conversations to have. I mean, I think, um, mentors are there to build you up and to also provide the safe space to talk, but also to provide the, the, I don't even, I don't want to say, I don't want to say criticism, but the, the hard truth sometimes, Yeah, you know, in a way it's not like, <laughs> Oh no, it's fine. You're doing great. No, Hey, guess what? You didn't do that really great. Yeah. Like you messed up. Like, so let's talk about it and see how this is going to be different next time. Yeah. Or even if it's a case, you know, I used to have mentors who they just like, I would send them a case and I would, I would show them about like how excited I was about it. And I was looking for them to build me up and they just continued to beat me down and bear me down and like rip the case apart. And I was yeah. like, man, I could have really used just a little bit of encouragement before all of that happened. So I think it's this fine balance of like, yeah. yes, we're looking for some encouragement, but we're also looking for the truth. Yeah. And so mm -hmm. it's not all sunshine and rainbows, but it's all not all doom and gloom either. Yeah. So I think you can strike that balance kind of running down the middle. It's just, it's when genuineness opens up and happens and that's when it transforms into more than mentorship to the friendship because you do, you have somebody you can trust. Yeah. You're just sitting there having a good conversation with your friend and it's real. It's not the, yeah. I think today, I think today in a, in a lot of ways, people are very guarded with some of their emotions. People are very guarded with a lot of their thoughts. They're scared of what people are going to judge them on. Yeah. I think that there's also a lot of a lack of trust in certain ways. Um, and I think when you can get into some of these mentorships, when it is a real when it's just real, not, it's not the, it's not the social media real R E E L right. it's the real <laughs> R E A L. You know, like when it's real, yeah, that's when it's just like, dang, that was, I'm, I'm that totally, was I'm totally picking up what you're putting down. Like the, yeah. the word that came coming to my brain was accountability because when I talked to yes. him, you know, I'm like, damn, that was you did that? You said that? I did. <laughs> you really? Did? I'm like, damn, he's a good leader. Like, I should, how old are you again? Like, I should get my act together. <laughs> you know, like, uh, 
I'm thinking, you know, I gotta, I gotta step up a little bit. You know what I mean? Like, um, it, you're exactly right. It can't be all sunshine and rainbow. Somebody's got to be able to call you out and just call mm-hmm. it when it happens. You know. And Zach's perfect with that balance. <clears throat> I mean, truly, like, it's there's a fine line of like, if everything was just like pat you in the back, you're not going to get anywhere. Right. You know. But if everything's all critical, it's going to be very defeating. So there's a certain level of both are inspirational, motivational, and then you can learn from it. And then the next time, you know, like if I'm doing a case, you know, it might be canted. All right. The next time I'm going to work on that. And then Zach will say like, I can tell you worked on that. Good job. Yeah. You know, like that's really good. Now I'll focus on this specific thing next time. So it's really just, there's so much benefit to having a mentor, there's so much benefit to having someone you can lean on. And I mean, I am nothing without you two. I mean, that's the craziest thing is, is just to say like what my life has become since getting to know both of you is life changing. And it started with just a very simplistic dialogue of, Hey, I need some help. Right. Can I come to you? And then also, I think the big thing is the core values between the three of us are very simple, like simply connected in that level too. Like if you see on the same page with somebody you guys can connect at a, at a deeper level. Whereas there's some mentors that I've had that we just didn't align. We liked each other, but like we didn't see life in the same capacity. We didn't see how to treat a team in the same capacity, right. um, how work was. So if you can actually align in that capacity too, like it's just going to be a, a big game changer in terms of relationship building. Yeah, totally. Now I want to ask you guys about this too, because this wasn't an easy journey for me. Part of you guys talking to each other, or if you're listening, finding another dentist that owns a practice is, It takes you a while to figure this out, but you're surrounded by a great group of people. They're called your team and they don't see your practice the way you see them. You used to think, oh, everyone sees all this stuff, but you notice 92 things in a day because you own it. You notice that something is crooked over there and oh, the grass has a few weeds outside and oh, you know, we got a three-star rating instead of a five-star rating. Like you're just on pins and needles a little bit more and you have to recognize that they, you know, so talking to somebody else that's in the same arena is critical in that respect. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I would say, I would say there's a lot of times too, when you talk about those core values, I mean, we're very clear and upfront with our team. Yeah. And, uh, I also am not ashamed to admit that there are times when I'm coming into work and I'm not at my a game, you know, like I'm beat down, I'm worn down, I'm exhausted or, you know, I had a bad evening, whatever the case was, but I know that I've surrounded myself with people who can buy into our core values. And when I'm not being the most uplifting or relational person, I know I've got people on the other side of the chair for me who are going to do that for me and kind of pick me up and carry me along. Yeah. And I think that's incredibly, incredibly important for somebody to recognize early on in their career. Because I've had people before who, you know, they weren't necessarily bought into that core value system and i'm like no look when we show up we're this is what we're about dentistry is our commodity but our our goals are to be uplifting relational confident and exude excellence in all we do so there are some days where i don't feel so great and i'm not being the most confident with what i'm doing and i just need somebody to pick me up and help me but i know i have assistants and i know i have teams up at the front that are going to just do that and they can still make it look seamless And again, I spend more time with these people than I do with Kevin. I spend more time with these people than I do sometimes my family on a given week. You know, so it is incredibly important to realize that these people can be sounding boards and mentors for you as well. Um, Mm -hmm. But again, having those core values and having that similar um, focus or that constant goal that you're striving towards is the huge part of it. Yeah, absolutely. 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 It's also good to have a position that you're not involved in the thick of it. Right. Because it's easy to offer advice and feedback when you're not in the middle. It's good to see it from that angle. And, and then you can say, well, have you tried it this way? Or have you done this? Or what do you think about this? And, and it's almost like a like epiphany type of moment when someone like you guys give me some feedback or advice because like, why didn't I think about that? It doesn't right. make any sense. You know, I was blind to it, but it's of course you guys have been through it. You get it. And then you can offer some type of suggestion to say, like, try it this way. And yeah. then it makes yeah. a lot of sense to me, but you don't get it then. 
Right. And Kevin and I have talked about this too. It's hard to see the storm when you're standing in the middle of it. But when somebody can Mm -hmm. stand on the outside and look in, it's very easy for them to be able to diagnose and kind of see what the problem is and help you. But again, I've been standing in the storm before. So like I totally get it. And that's one key thing that Kevin and I've talked about um, at times is he's like, man, like this is just so good. Like I, I just love having our talks and I love doing this. And, and, uh, he said, I just, I didn't know mentorship could be so great. And I was like, yeah, you know, me neither. He's like, what do you mean? And I was like, don't you realize dude, like I, I, I've had mentors in the past who haven't been as great and I'm trying to do anything and everything I can for you that I wish they would have done for me. Yeah. I was like, Sometimes they were able to see the storm that I was in and then sometimes they'd let me drown in the storm. Yeah. I was like, but I hope that I can help you and provide like some kind of insight when you're in the middle of that. Right. And some kind of positivity to bring you out of it compared to just sit there and let you drown and act like it's not like you don't really care. Yeah, absolutely. Now, this is such an important concept, but I want to add some clarity to it. And I'm coming at it from a little bit of a different angle, too, because I hear these stories. So speak to this, you know, there's young dentists that I meet and they're awesome. They're on fire. And they're like, I got to get into a practice where someone can mentor me. And there's some legitimate, you know, clarity around that. And then there are other people who are like, you know, I need a mentor. I need a partner. I'm like, you don't need a partner to have a mentor. It's been my experience. My favorite mentors. There's no agenda. We don't need to create a business together to mentor each other. Like, no, a business partnership is a business partnership. I can find mentors and let me, I'm going to complicate it a little bit because Dan Sullivan said this to me. I went through strategic coach and then I went through the 10X program because you pay a whole bunch more and you get to be with him and it's the same thing, you know, but I wanted to be with him and I wanted to really, and he said to me in the first day, he's like, there'll be a day where you're going to have to go on from here. You're going to hear everything I've probably shared with you and we'll still be friends and we'll still have a relationship, but you're going to have to go get an influence from elsewhere. So in that, you know, if you're a young dentist, Zach, you know, Kevin, what would you say to a young dentist who's listening, who's embracing a career of probably three decades or four decades? How do I look at this clearly as I go out into the world? It's a marathon, not a sprint. You know, you've got to be starting to look long-term to a degree. Right. Uh, I always thought, when I first got out, I was like, okay, I've got to get my practice. I've got to start doing large cases. This is what I got to do. Right. And I had mentors who were like, you're not ready for that yet. Like, just take your time. Like, this is not, this is not something that you all have to accomplish in the first year, but find people who are going to help you see that vision and help you slowly implement it. Again, the people who will help you again, see that vision when they've been there and know it prior to you, getting into it. So it's kind of hard sometimes to have like somebody you graduated dental school with be your mentor. Yes, you can be buddies and you can go through life together and figure that out and talk about it. But to have somebody who has that slightly more senior, I guess, view um, is a big help at times. So they can sometimes put it in perspective for you that this isn't all going to happen right now. Right. But I'll let Kevin talk to because he's the younger one. So. <laughs> okay. I learn from everybody. Yeah. I mean, literally, I could be a sponge to every single person in the room. I don't care yeah. if you're one day out of school or if you're 40 years into practice. You know, ultimately, like, I think that mentality allows you to establish some type of networking or connectivity amongst a community that wants to give back. And when you have the ability to want to learn and, and, and grow from other people, it, it, it becomes natural. It's easy. It's, it's, it, I don't know. That's a strength of mine is to connect with people around me. I get mm-hmm. that. I know it's hard for other people to reach out and say, I want to, I want to learn, but I'm, I'm struggling. It's, it's hard for me to come to you and ask for help. Right. Um, but just do it and, and jump right in and, and the benefits of it will vastly outweigh the, 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 the timid nature the, the lack of, I guess insecurity, I guess, more than anything else. If I, it's hard, so, it's hard to ask for help. It's hard to be vulnerable. Young, young dentists need to be like Kevin Groth because I tell, I tell Kevin, he is the best person that I ever have met who is able to lean into the awkward. And explain so, that, explain, what do you mean by that? So Kevin is one of those people and I love this about him. Um, he's able to lean into the awkward with anybody. Like if somebody is maybe opposing him, he just leans into it and says, tell me more. 
-hmm. If there's, uh, and, and I think the reason why I say that to the young dentist is don't be afraid to lean into the awkward right. because you have, it's going to feel awkward at first, like to go up and just mm -hmm. ask somebody for help. But to have that humility and just be able to sit there and lean into it and say, tell me more. Because you never know what you might learn. Right. You know, a lot of people, when something gets awkward or when they face like somewhat of an opposition, they back off. They say, okay, well, I'm not going to go that route. You know, this isn't, we see two, we see things two different ways. So there's nothing to learn here. But Kevin is very good at being able to say, tell me more about that. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm just, I'm, I joke with him all the time because he'll talk to me about patients that he did this with. He'll talk to me about friends he's done this with. And I'm just like, you are the king of being able to lean into it and not feel awkward a bit. Yeah. I was like, if anything, I think you would make the other person start to feel awkward by your just total nonchalant attitude about it. And so you have to be willing though to do that, to lean into the awkward or lean into the no. Okay, let me ask about that. Kevin, was that an acquired thing? Like you could lean into the awkward? Or did well, what's you the worst that can happen? What's the <laughs> worst thing no. that can happen? <laughs> right. I learned yeah. that from Hyman. You know, ultimately, like it doesn't, who cares? Like right. if it's, if it, <laughs> if it doesn't work out, then it's just going to be the next thing up. You know, right. like it doesn't matter. So I don't know if I can shoot my shot and see if it works. And it, it, it does, if it doesn't, then I've learned from that experience and we move on to the next thing. Right? right. And, and just, that's what life is. Right. And I've learned that more than anything else recently is that you just have to almost like just throw yourself out there. And if, it, if you fall, then you're going to gain some energy falling down and you're going to build it back up and you're going to learn from that lesson. And you're going to surround yourself with people and, and be picky with your mentors. There's some people yeah. that like, I would never choose them to be my mentor not bad people, nothing wrong with them. It's just, they're not the people that I want to surround myself with. Right. I know Kirk, you talk about this to me all the time and you say like, well, at some point in time, you're going to have to like, let me go. I, that's never going to happen. Well, <laughs> so I'm never going to let either of you guys go, you know, wow. but it's, it's, like it's just because I've connected on a deep level right. with you guys. And it's just, we're still growing together and we're all going to move forward with that. And our, our weekly conversations, Kirk, those go everywhere. I mean, if yeah. you know, Kirk bear from this podcast, you know, that it's always so scattered and, and imagine just a one-on-one -on -one phone call with the man. I mean, it's just like, <laughs> my wife's like, what'd you talk about with Kirk? I'm like, I have no idea. I, have no I don't idea. know what it, it just, it just happens. And like this, the ideas just flow and it becomes something that it, it, it truly is enjoyable. And it's something that that's what it also has to be is it's not a job to be a right. mentor. It's not a job to be a mentee. It's energizing to be in that relationship on both ends. In those times when it didn't work out, it was draining on me. It was right. draining on them. And I cut ties because it's not worth my energy to invest into you, or it's not investing your energy into me to groom you, you know, and that's where you have to figure out the authenticity about the relationship too. Yeah, absolutely. And your every day is kind of driven by, you You guys mentioned core values. It's like the most important thing ever. But at the end of the day, you know, I'm reading Atomic Habits because my wife told me to read it two years ago and I didn't oh, read it. Too. I know. Yes. Well, she read it two years ago and it's still on her night table. She's like, honey, you should read this. Like, this is totally your jam. And of course, I didn't read it because it had a weird title. And I'm like, no, honey, I read other stuff. And of course I read it and I'm like, this is the greatest book ever. And she's like, oh my gosh, seriously. Now, what a... <laughs> Uh, you guys should all read it if you're listening, but like one of the things that I keep reading over and over again is figure out who you want to be. Don't, instead of like trying to figure out how and what and like, who do you want to be? And at the end of the day, I think this all speaks to it as like, a, I just want to make the world a better place. And I heard this many, you know, many months ago, you know, you're not really a great leader until you, you know, create other great leaders, you know, cause we put the onus on ourselves to be a better communicator, better business owner, better this, better that. And then I'm like, crap, who cares? Like, let's develop people. Even in your practice, Zach, you talk about like developing team members when your team members could take photos and they do on great stuff. And then you meet another young dentist and you're like, oh my gosh, it's so great. It's one of the greatest things you ever experienced. And I've never had a chance to ask Pete Dawson this question, but I think at the last couple of months of his life, if we would ask him, like, what are your favorite accomplishments of all time? He would point to his family and he'd go, look at all these kids. Look at all these kids. They're not kids anymore. You know what I mean? Like he's left the world in a better place. I mean, so um, I think it's really fun to watch the next generation of leaders, whether it be in your practice or in your profession, take, take shape, don't you think? Absolutely. Well, that energy is contagious. Yeah. Right? I mean, someone wants sent me something that's like, you don't know 
the extent in which you influence other people, right? Because a life touches a life touches a life touches a life. And ultimately those that you surround yourself with them will take that. And if you positively impact them, then they're going to carry it forward to those around them. And it just becomes this, this web that gets bigger and bigger. And I think that's the lesson that we've all learned from the last couple of years is that that can also go the opposite, right? The negativity can also spread very quickly too. So I don't know, be the source of somebody to uplift and be the source of somebody to bring a positive outlook to something. And, and I lean on you guys like lately for that. And I think it's important because it just kind of carries forward in terms of how we interact and we, we do things on a, on a consistent basis. So yeah. um, I'm just, yeah, it's so important to have people. We yeah. get by with communities and when you're socially distant, it makes it difficult, right? I mean, the whole concept of that isn't healthy yeah. because you're not connecting and obviously social media and stuff you can, but it's not the same. Right. You know, there's some lack of truth to someone on social media. And when you actually can see beneath that, you can get that and understand it and, and realize that there's that depth is what's really most important too. Right. And I got to ask anyone you- who's done anything excellent in their career. Like anytime I see someone who has a brilliant case online, I know that that comes with 15 other cases that failed right. that led to that one success. So yeah. at least, and I don't, I'm sure you agree with that Zach and, and Kirk too, but right. I don't know. Yeah. Now let me ask you both about this. The, the mental health conversation is very important. It's very real. I don't claim to be an expert. I'm certainly not, but it, it's a conversation that we have all the time with people. And in this day and age, um, you know, having somebody that you can lean on, you know, and I grew up in a day and age where, you know, I, I'm still terrible at Instagram, still like all that kind of stuff. If I'm a young dentist listening, like it, we're built to actually have relationships with other people face to face that care about us and other things like that. I think it's critically important. And I don't, I, again, I'm not an expert, but like my favorite things whenever, and I have challenges on days. I'm like, I just got to talk to somebody I love. Do you know what I mean? Like, and somehow, some way it gets a little bit better and the world makes a little bit more sense. But what's, you know, you guys get a chance to talk to other dentists too. Like this is a serious conversation in the world and mentors play a valuable role in it. Um, and I, I was listening to a conversation, Andy Reid from the Kansas City Chiefs. And it was so great because he's had a rough go you know, in his personal life and all this stuff. And now they're doing all the juggling of the NFL coaches. And he said this, it always, and I do mean always, I don't care if you're coaching at the pro level, college over high school level, it's about one thing. It's about relationships. And I was like, bam, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like in a world that that's, is that intense? You guys talk at that level about what's the core piece of this? So, and again, I don't even know if there's a question in there, but like I wanted you guys to comment on, you know, the next generation of dentists coming in the world when it comes to those challenges? I think when it comes to the relational component, like, um, it's the hard, it's the hard component. Like, yeah. I mean, like, let's face it, like, um, dealing with patients, dealing with other colleagues, dealing with friends, like if they would just all agree with me or do whatever, it would just be easy, but it's not, yeah. it's just not life. That's not reality. And I think when it comes to the relational component, it can be so incredibly frustrating, so incredibly draining, but it's also the most incredibly rewarding part about our job and about life in general. Um, just like you saying, like when somebody looks back on their life, what are they going to be, what are they going to be most proud of? Like, it's probably going to be relationships with people that they've established. If not, then I don't know. Everything else kind of seems a little bit, um, superficial. Right. Like if it's about money or if it's about power or something else, like an accomplishment, but it's really about how did I impact somebody else's life to make it better? And I think that goes along the same with mentorship, like even with Kevin, like how can I impact his life to make it better? How can I impact a patient that I'm going to see? I mean, cause we all have that. We all have that person that's going to be the draining energy vampire you know, from us, but it's a matter of, well, can I turn this around? Yeah. Is it something that I can turn around or am I going to need my team to help me turn it around? Like, how do we go about trying to still be an uplifting even when somebody comes in like that? Because while it's the most challenging part, it's still the most rewarding and fulfilling part, just sitting laughing and enjoying our day. Love it. So I don't know what you'd say about that, Kevin, but. I mean, if you're a young dentist and trying to do something profound, 
practice or life. Just care about other people. Like that's a simple concept. Just do right. what you can to care for people. And when you do ca- take care of people as if they are family or a close relative or whatever it may be, everything else will fall into place. You take care of your team. Great. You take care of your patients. Great. I mean, we were out to dinner on Saturday night. Our waiter was phenomenal mm-hmm. because he was attentive. He cared about us. He wanted to make sure that we were, he toured the restaurant with us. He did everything he could to make us comfortable. You just don't see that this day and age. I mean, everything's corporatized. You're going to be, you know, quick service, quick everything, make sure everyone gets in and out, but you lose that genuine aspect of caring and that people are not going to want to go to somebody that has a fast service. You know, that's why corporate has its place, but it's not going to be something that I don't feel like is going to last because everybody's getting out of school, jumping into corporate and they're learning how to be quick at something. But that's not a sustainable growth for that person, you know, because you just you can't get faster and faster and faster and find you know value within that. But you yeah. can build relationships with people. You can have trust built up with people. You can actually find value in terms of what you're providing to somebody, and it feels better yeah. to care for somebody beyond your own. And I don't know. That's really what it comes down to. And you can have the same thing with a mentor. Yeah. I care about my mentees. I care about my mentor. I want the best for everybody, and then it builds a relationship from there. Yeah. You know, it'd be fun. I'm already having FOMO because I'm not included in your conversations. Maybe I could bring some of my problems here. We can drop a problem (laughs) and just every Wednesday show up and help sort them. And you guys could chime in and listen. And I think we, we could all find some purpose in that. I know I'd learn a lot from you guys, but uh, so cool. Well, any last thoughts on mentorship? You know, and again, we got a lot of students and even a few pre-dental students. Listen, you know, what would you say to them? I guess the thing I would recommend is like I've said this before, what's the cost of some type of conference to go to a thousand dollars, $2,000, $5,000, whatever it may be. What's the cost of actually setting up some relationship that will help guide you and implement things and change your life. Probably a lot more than one of those courses will be. So do whatever you need to, to make sure that once you find a mentor, do not lose them. Yeah. Connect with them. Do everything you can to inspire them and show that you're working hard to build that relationship and implement the things you're doing. But then on top of that, show gratitude and appreciation. Because if you don't have that gratitude to what they're doing for you, then that relationship will inherently fizzle out. So that's what I say. I've I've bought bottles of wine. I've bought appetizers. I've bought dinners. Whatever it is, there's no cost associated with the value of a mentorship. And that's one thing I would just reach out to other people and just say, just jump in, do and inspire and then keep that relationship going. Yeah. So that's it was so funny. I, I talked show. to, I talked to Bob Marges the week ever. He's like, Oh, I just love you. You know what he did though? It pissed me off. I'm like, what? He bought dinner. <laughs> like on the way, like he, he found his way to the bathroom, paid for dinner. And he's like, that was not, he was not supposed to do that. And I'm like, that's just how Kevin rolls. You know what I mean? So it was always cool to, to hear that. Zach, what are your last what thoughts on this? So my last thought would just be, again, to a lot of these uh, new dentists kind of getting out, don't, don't be so afraid of failure. I mean, like, again, failure is a success is kind of a lousy teacher and failure is actually a really good teacher. Um, and like Kevin said, the worst you can say is no. So even if you come in, I think a lot of times when you're coming out of school, you're so scared to do something wrong. You're so scared to say the wrong thing. Just ask, like, we've all been there. We're all here to help. So it's not a matter of, uh, you don't need to be scared of it. Yeah. Okay. So I guess take that fear of failure away. Yeah. And like seven, like Kevin said, the gratitude component is huge. You know, gratitude is something that can't be felt. It has to be expressed. You know, like I can feel gratitude for you, Kirk. I'm so thankful for you, but unless I say the words to you, you can't feel my gratitude. Right. So it's the same way that Kevin, I mean, him showing like acts of uh, like um, uh, gifts, you know, yeah. and dinners and things like that. It's a, it's an expression. Gratitude yeah. is very much an expression that has to be expressed, not something that I just feel. So totally. from that standpoint, I, again, don't be afraid to ask. I mean, everybody's here to help and to try and kind of uplift you and move you forward because we've all been there. Like, yeah, we've all been scared to ask somebody at some point, but when you do and you can invest in the relationship component, that's when it becomes again genuine friendship, yeah. the real, not the 
social media reel. So. Totally agree. <laughs> and I'll add one more layer that makes this, this industry, I'm so grateful I fell into dentistry. I don't even, people always ask me, how do you get into dentistry? I'm like, I have no idea. I just, I'm blessed. It's very noble. And what I mean by that is it's a good person industry. Like I have friends that are in law in real estate and they're like, it's crazy. Like you work with people, they would stab you in the back to get in front of you, you know, <laughs> or in media or things like that. You know, if you're listening, you're, you're probably in the dental industry, which is an incredibly noble profession. People, it's real, it's filled with great people everywhere. Do you know what I mean? So um, you know, you, you rest assured when you, when you, you know, feel that fear and do it anyway, like it's going to be really well received on the end. Very rarely is anyone going to say no, you know, hardly ever if that, so you're in a great place. So cool. I'm going to Valen told you guys to do a regular series on something. I have no idea. Maybe we'll, just, we'll pick, you know, it'd be fun Perfect. for me to ask you guys, you know, okay, what was your biggest schedule challenge in the last month or biggest, you know, how did you screw up financial arrangements? I want, I want you to bring those bombs and we can unsort them, you know, here or your biggest technical failures. That'd be kind of fun. But I also want um, people that are listening to follow you guys. You guys do an incredible job of like putting it out there. And so if I want to learn more about Kevin growth and Zach Sussler, where do I go? How do I find out more about you guys? I mean, I, Kevin growth at Gmail is a great email address for me. Um, or Dr. Dr. Kevin growth at, on Instagram. But to me, it's just like, reach out. I'm happy yeah. to respond. I'm happy to be a service. I'm doing an act to you presentation, what March 18th, I think. So I'm excited about that. And a lot of this topic and dialogue, but I mean, I want to promote Zach because Zach has an amazing over the shoulder course. And it's one of those things that I got to experience locally in Detroit yeah. um, that he's putting on in his small town show on what he's like and how to do a course or how to do a case start to finish. And I mean, unfortunately, he keeps planning it when I can't make it, um, but that's not my fault. That's his. So okay, we'll ahead, open Zach. this up. Is it a two day? <laughs> is it a two day course? Three day course? What is it? Like, tell me what it is. Uh, so we have a we have a two day experience where okay. if you come in to the office, uh, we host them twice a year. Uh, the next one is coming up in October. So if anybody's interested in the course, feel free to go to drsisler.com and look at the four dentist tab. We have uh, outlines on there of the course and you can watch a little video just about it. Um, but the goal is for you to kind of get more of that mentorship vibe. Like it's a small group environment. We only let 10 people in the course. Um, you get to come and watch and we'll do a little lecture component talking about smile design and aesthetics. And then we will literally go in the op and you can stand over my shoulders and watch me prep a case of veneers the next day we'll come back. Uh, we take you to a nice dinner. Everything's kind of all inclusive once you get here. And then the next day we come back in and we talk about social media and marketing and photography. And then um, you we go back into the operatory and we watch uh, a case of 10 veneers or eight veneers get delivered. So a lot of people have um, really just like the small group environment. They feel it's less threatening. They feel it's uh, very welcoming and kind of able to ask questions and um, not, they're just not fearful, right. you know? And so we have, we try to really make it a fun experience for everybody. Uh, thus far, everybody's given us great reviews and they said it's been absolutely fantastic. Um, Kevin's not one of those people because he's either having a baby or he's what? doing something else, you know? So, uh, but no, all joking aside, um, we have a lot of fun and my goal is really just to have young dentists and well, dentists of all age to come in and just be able to enjoy and realize that, you can do this anywhere. Yeah. Like we're in the middle of a farm town where you're driving past farms to come to the office and we're still able to do this kind of aesthetic dentistry. So you can do it in your practice wherever you're at. That's awesome. So it's a lot of fun. And uh, if you want to connect with me, uh, Dr. Dr. Underscore Zach Sisler on Instagram. And uh, again, drsisler.com, go to the four dentist tab and shoot us an email and we will uh, get back with you. That's awesome. And Zach's one of the best clinical educators I've ever known. As young as he is, it's amazing. Like he simplifies it. He puts it like into practice and shows exactly how to do it. And such a, uh, uh, something you can go on Monday morning and put it into your practice. So to me, it's like, just, I don't know, I can't pump it up enough and it's, it's not my course, but I've never been to it, but I know it's just my experience through Zach. It's just, it's outstanding. So just, if you're interested, definitely go over there, do it. There you go. Yeah. Just do it. Thank you very much. 
Yeah, so I'm going to put the our, our post-production team will put all the information in the show notes. So we'll make it super easy. If you're listening on Stitcher or Spotify, just flip up to the notes. Make sure you're not driving. But you can flip over to the notes, and you'll see where everything is at. It'll all be right there for you guys. So thank you guys for being on. Uh, I just love volunteering you for stuff. So this is going to be fun. Like we're going to do a whole series on something. I'm not sure what it is yet, but uh, stick around when we say goodbye to everybody else. But thank you guys for tuning in the best practices show. Hey, if you enjoyed today, which I know you did, just do us a favor, hit the share button, share it with your friends and keep sending us suggestions that you guys want to hear from these guys. I'll line them up and make them talk about it. Like, I don't know. We'll, we'll figure out something. It's like, send us your most challenging case. That would be kind of fun. We would like walk them through it or whatever. Um, <laughs> we're here to help in any way that we can. And remember this, when your practice gets a little bit better, so does your life. And you're in a fantastic industry. It's called dentistry. So hope you guys enjoy your day. And until we see you next time, keep watching the best practices show. You guys enjoy the rest of your day. Mm-hmm.